Right, hi, uh, today I'm going to create a tutorial for how to create a stylized walk using biped in uh, 3ds Max with uh, the keyframing tools, a little bit like this. Okay, and as you can see there, we've got uh, the biped set up and with the footstep mode. Now first I'm going to show you how to create a biped and how to put it in footstep mode. So first of all you need to go to create systems and click and drag a biped onto the stage. Now after you've done this you want to go to the motions panel here and you're going to go to the footstep mode and let's uh, create a few footsteps so let's go create multiple footsteps and let's uh, increase that to 10 click OK. Right, the moment they're inactive and they're not going to do anything if you drag the, the timeline see there nothing happens so what it's doing at the moment it needs to create the, uh, the keyframes so if you go to this button here create keyframes for inactive footsteps it will automatically create this walk cycle okay there you go now at the moment it's a bit boring really and uh, most characters wouldn't walk in this fashion especially if you're doing a cartoony style and what we really want to do is put a bit more character into it so for this character here I've got a plane set up and a biped and uh, I've already uh, put the keyframes in for the arms all the way through However, you can see when it gets to this point, the body stops moving. So what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, make this movement and how to alter this. So what you want to do, click on the biped, go to the keyframing tools, uh, key info rather, here, expand that. And you see this little circular button here, that's a set key mode. Now you don't need to put this in, into any uh, auto key or anything for this. And now what I'd also recommend doing as well is uh, you click this button down here. Now that's uh, the key mode toggle which allows you to, uh, when, you, when you press these buttons here, they automatically skip to each keyframe. Instead of, you, you might just uh, drag and drop, you might get slightly off and put a keyframe where you don't want it to be. Now also what I'd recommend is if you right click, go configure, and go uh, show select track range. So if I select and highlight these, I can easily scale them. Okay, I'll just undo that. Now I'm going to go skip to the keyframe where it stops. Now, for this character here, uh, I'm not going to continue with what I was doing. I'm going to make it uh, have a bit of a sleepwalking uh, type walk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this arm here. Now I've also turned on the angle snap toggle, and that will just uh, stop the, the spinner from, from going into decimals, and it will uh, keep to, to 5 degrees. And the other thing you want to do is uh, go to the local coordinate system. Otherwise, if you go world, uh, which is a uh, default or view, the the x, y, and z will um, correspond to the, the the scene rather than the actual uh, object. So, for example, this this arm is obviously not um, in 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 line with the scene. So, if you go to local, the the gizmo will align to the arm, and you can see that that is its a uh, z direction x direction sorry okay now what we're going to do is every time you move it and you want to set this keyframe you have to click this button here okay otherwise if you move it and then you drag the timeline it won't it won't work okay so I'm going to go back to this keyframe and I'm going to rotate the arm okay and that I'm going to rotate a bit more I'm going to press set key for that I'm going to go to the hand, I'm going to rotate it down, I'm going to press set key, and go to the other arm as well, and I'm going to put that in the same kind of position. Okay. Oops. Rotate a bit more. You should really um, look at the uh, down here as well for what uh, angles you're doing would help. So this one, I'm going to rotate it in uh, in X by about uh, 70 degrees. I'm going to rotate the arm down. Oops. I'm going to rotate the hand by 70 in Z. I'm going to create key. Now, if you see, if I drag the timeline back, the arms will raise up to that point. But then, when you get to the next keyframe, they'll come back down again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete this keyframe, 
for that hand. Now the hands are linked to the uh, the arms. So if you create a keyframe there, uh, it will create a keyframe for everything along uh, along the uh, down the arm. <clears throat> Just undo that. I'll rotate this back up. And I'll rotate the hand down. So he's moving, he's like he's uh, sleepwalking at the moment. Delete the key there. Delete the key here. Just move it again. It's a bit tedious this at some point. But once you get used to it, once you remember every time that you gotta press that set key, which I sometimes forget, you'll be okay. And you can do this for, for any kind of motion with the, the footsteps. Footsteps can be a bit awkward sometimes that I've found. To actually create anything other than a walk. And this is just going to help uh, stylize your character a bit more. So I turn turn around to the front. You see he's walking, swaying, head moving. And he comes up, his arms are in this position. And once you set the keyframe, once you use a set key, it will automatically calculate uh, the movements in between. And that, whichever, um, and the way it does that depends on what kind of uh, tangent to use. So you could use uh, this smooth in, smooth out. You've got a, a step uh, keyframe, so it will jump from one position to the next. And uh, some other slow in, fast out, fast out, fast in, slow out as well. Okay, so let's go and create some for the head as well. We start to sleepwalk. Let's skip this keyframe. You can also use these buttons here to skip from keyframe to keyframe. I'm gonna go to the head. I'm gonna rotate that down because he's fallen asleep. Set keyframe there. Skip to the next one. Rotate it. Next one, same again. Let's see how that looks. Right. Okay, and press set key. There we go. So, as you can see, our character is walking along, swaying along. And all of a sudden, falls asleep, and then returns to walking. And that is the basics of how you you need to stylize a character, and how you can use the, these keyframing tools to get a more stylized uh, impression of what your character is doing. Because I you also find that once once you apply this to a mesh, that sometimes the the default walk cycle, uh, some of the uh, it won't it won't look right because your character it might not it might, if it's cartoony it's not going to walk in a realistic fashion that's just about it for keyframing tools as i said you don't need to put this in uh, auto key uh, remember this button here and remember to configure your 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 selection range for example if i wanted these keys here for the head it, it automatically um chooses whichever uh, bone you're on, whichever I, whichever object in the scene, it could be, it could be a sphere, it could be a, a cube, and it will only show those uh, keyframes for your selection. So I can select all of it here, and I've, I've got multiple keyframes. So it, it just stops you altering anything that you might not want to do. So I grab these two keyframes here for the head. And I'm going to scale them, so we can see here. He wakes up and continue walking. Alright, okay, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And that's about all, that's about it.